I did my bachelor's from VJTI in Mumbai. Uh, after doing my bachelor's, I worked for one year in Chrysler, Chennai. And after that, I left to the States to pursue my Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Texas A&M University College Station. I like thermal sciences because we had really good professors in thermal sciences in my bachelor's and so I wanted to pursue a master's in it. Uh, Texas A&M has a lot of good professors in thermal sciences, so I had a lot of good options for advisors. I had a lot of good options for courses as well as Texas being in the vicinity of Austin, which is the new Silicon Hills as they call it now, and Houston, which is the energy capital of the states. Uh, provides a very good opportunity for, you know, future jobs. First time I applied for Masters was 2016, at which point I had applied to all ambitious universities. Like I had done UT Austin, a and again, Purdue, UIUC, uh, uh, Georgia Tech, all the top names. And I ended up getting an admission from UIUC, but that was Master of Engineering, which was a one-year course with no research. I waited my options and I didn't really like the course, so I decided to pursue a job for one year and apply next year again. And this time I only applied to the universities I had a strong chance of getting in, so I applied to Purdue, Texas A&M and University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I got in AM and Minnesota Twin Cities and I chose AM because uh, I like the weather in AM. It's a very highly competitive university because it has it's a great university, but it also has a low tuition. So a lot of students apply to it, especially Indians. So I would say the GPA would be close to 8.0 for all of the peers I had in my class, GRE close to 320 and up and TOEFL maybe 100 plus because no one really cares about TOEFL. I went to US only because I really see myself uh, staying in this country. I like the companies that are in this country. So I really want to work eventually for the big giants like the FANG group of companies. So that's a dream I've still not given up on and that's possible. Well, being in the US gives you a big heads up if you want to work there. And uh, I did not really apply to other co uh, countries because of the language barrier. And I, I just wanted to be here and I got here. So yeah, didn't really apply as well. My course fee when I was a student was $8,500 a semester gets you to about $34,000 for the two years of courses I took. Uh, when I got in, I actually was lucky enough to be funded as a graduate assistant by a professor. I continued with the same professor for two semesters, at which point uh, I switched advisors with the second advisor. I was a student worker and then I moved on to a teaching assistant for two semesters. So a good majority of my course was funded. Uh, the rest of it, I was actually lucky to get the Tata scholarship and the Mahindra scholarship from India. These are loan scholarships. So that helped cover the rest of the expense. Really, when I started as a graduate assistant, that was for me working on my thesis. And uh, that was a major reason I had chosen to come to the States to pursue a Master of Science, is to do a thesis and you know get the learnings from it. So it did not affect my education, actually just helped me. And with the two semesters I did a teaching assistant where one of the most highlights of my time at AM because I really liked interacting with the students and you know teaching them and learning from them and you know developing my communication skills in that process. So you know did not affect my studies, instead added to the experience. It is the biggest university in the States by number of students. So you have so many courses and so many departments that you can choose courses from like in my master of thesis, I was able to take two courses which were outside my department. 
ended up using one of those and uh, there's a lot of professors as i mentioned before who do a lot of research in different fields and there are new professors coming in all the time they're by expanding the number of options you have so academically it's a very strong university and from the fun aspect of it texas a&m is a major sports team so the football team at a&m we are called the texas a&m aggies we do really well in football like top 10 top 15 every year and the football games are a really an important well a very fun part of the whole college experience for me i went to seven football games and thoroughly enjoyed each one of them and plus at a&m we have a lot of traditions like bonfire we have a lot of traditions which help unite the students and add to your experience other than academics so you just feel a part of the family and if you meet an aggie in any part of the world for that matter uh, they will have a conversation with you and you know which might lead to future opportunities so yeah very strong alumni network always proud to be an aggie yes so aggies they tend to bind together so since the start of the academic year there are a lot of things that we do to you know for our school spirit so we'll go to every football game and you know there's a tradition in nm called the 12th man in which you know every student is there to support the team and you need so we stand through all the football games for the 3 or 5 hours of it so we will not take a seat during the whole football game so that's the strong spirit and we are one of the most difficult stadiums to play in because when the opposing team is playing us we will yell at the top of our lungs so that they can't really hear each other and they end up making mistakes so the aggie spirit is very strong and then we have uh, rem- remembrances for the students we lost uh, during past incidences or you know students we lost during this current academic year that we remember every few months so that's called the bonfire and then that's called the silver taps also and then we have a lot of traditions so there's a part in the campus where you can't really step on the grass because this grass is supposed to be in memory of the students who served in the army so you can't really step on the grass so all these small traditions they just add to your experience and uh, if you abide by all these traditions you are called a good bull but if you don't you are called a two percenter and i've been a good bull and yeah and it was really fun in texas a&m is driven majorly by oil and gas companies who are the not the most accepting of international students i mean there be big companies like schlumberger halliburton which do accept international students and a lot of our alumni end up there but this half of it i want to say is oil and gas and the other half of it for mechanical engineering would be other companies such as there are a lot of aggies in tesla and uh semiconductor companies in rivian and there's a lot of aggies in where i work daikin so the prospects of after you graduate are really good provided you put a lot of effort in networking with people as well as you know you attend all the job fairs career fairs and do promptly follow up with the recruiter after you do that so that and you make a lasting impression on the recruiter so one is networking and two is career fairs are always good i was able to attend five career fairs during my time at and then uh, each career fair has about uh, about 70 80 companies come up for mechanical engineering alone my job story is kind of interesting in a career fair i was uh, able to approach a company uh, another company in hvc and i had interviewed there but one of the uh, uh engineers interviewing me he left for daikin and that's where he was able to he referred me and and i got the job so i had interviewed for quite a few companies but this is like one company which was solid in terms of the brand name the job description as well as sponsoring the visa 
so we have to account for all these facts like if a company is not willing to sponsor your h1b visa your time in this country is pretty limited so you need to that's something you need to look for also while choosing a company